Hello everyone and welcome to Jumperman Tech where we specialize in HVAC but do everything DIY and today I'm going to show you how to troubleshoot a two pole contactor in a real life scenario. Thank you to everyone tuning in to Jumperman Tech. This is a training board that I created and today we're going to go over on how to troubleshoot a two pole contactor in a real life scenario. Before we can begin troubleshooting this contactor, it is important to understand what we're actually dealing with. So here we have a two pole contactor. First pole, second pole. If you look closely, you might not be able to see through the video, but we have a 24 volt coil. If we look closely on the side of this type of contactor, you're always gonna find the coil. So the coil is this terminal here. And on this side, we can see we have the other side of the coil. The way this works is similar to a relay. We all have the same concepts in general. So once the coil is energized, and in this case, we have a 24 volt coil. Once we have 24 volts across the coil, then we will create a magnetic field and you will see the plunger close it would pop in. That means now we are sending voltage from one side to the other and again from one side to the other. What I mean by sending voltage from one side to another, basically these two across from each other are isolated. Once this is energized, this closes and creates contact between the top to the bottom, just these two specifically and then these two specifically. Keep in mind, this is isolated as you can see the bridge here. I will now show you a demonstration which will hopefully help you understand a bit better. So I'm gonna set my meter to continuity. I'm gonna put one lead on the bottom, one lead on top for the right side. See right there, okay? Once the coil energizes, this will plunge in and create a contact between the two. So let's see if I can get this with one hand. So right now we have no continuity. Let's say 24 volt is applied. This will plunge in and create contact. You see, we have the noise. That means our contactor is energized, specifically our coil, and we have created contact. The same for the other side. So let's I'm gonna put this lead in here. Put the other lead here. Once the coil is energized, this would plunge in and then create contact from here to here. Right now they're not touching. We're gonna act as if the coil is energized and plunge this in. And now we have contact from here to here. Once again, keep in mind, this side is separated from this side. In this case, this contactor controls our cooling circuit. So in this board, this represents our compressor and this represents our condenser fan motor. So this contactor controls both, which would be our condensing unit. If so far you are enjoying this content, please drop a like, comment, and subscribe as I come out with new videos every week, and let's continue. Here's our thermostat, and I hope you all can see the system is on off, fan is on auto, so right now there is nothing going on over here, but we have power applied to our unit. Here is our low voltage terminal block. These wires are coming from our thermostat. I'm just gonna zoom out so you all can see. So as you can see, we have our thermostat here and here are the wires coming to our terminal block and from here we can just run a few tests before we begin. Just so we are all on the same page here, our red wire is our R on our thermostat, the blue wire is our C, common, our green wire is for G, which is our fan, and our yellow wire is for Y, which is our cooling wire. So right now we have our meter set to volts AC. And when we check across R and C, which is our red and blue wire, right? Power and common. 
we should have 24 volts. And as you can see, we have a 28 volt reading. There's no such thing as perfection in life. So anything above 24 volts is our 24 volts. So when we check between R and Y, we have 24 volts again. So that is our cooling circuit, all right? When we set our thermostat to cool, we're gonna have a voltage drop and you'll see that between R and Y, which is our red and yellow wire, we're gonna get the voltage drop and you're gonna see zero volts. That means that the thermostat did its job and it closed the contacts and we're now sending power through Y. So, let me keep my terminals here. All right, we're going between R and Y. We're gonna put the system on cooling. So just put it to cooling and I just drop temperature. Right there, as you can see, between R and Y, we just had a voltage drop. That means the thermostat did its job, so that's good. And now we are sending power through the Y wire. So now there's 24 volts on the Y wire. What you hear running is this fan right here, which is controlled by this relay. So when you set your system to cooling, right, our fan is on auto, it's also gonna energize our, is our indoor fan. This stands for our indoor fan, your evaporator fan. But if we notice, we don't have our cooling yet. This will represent our compressor and this is our condenser fan. And this contactor hasn't plunged in yet. The reason for that is that if you look at the coil for our contactor, you can see it runs through here and this is a timer. So once the thermostat closes, we have our voltage drop. Now we're being sent power here, but the power is being held off until this timer reaches a predetermined amount of time. Then it will travel to our coil. Here's our timer, and if we look closely on our timer, we only have two terminals, one and two. Let's just check our timer across the timer. We have 24 volts and we should see a voltage drop and our condensing units start once the predetermined amount of time of the timer passes by. So I got my two leads on there. Let's give it some time and let's see what happens with the voltage while checking across. Okay, you might have noticed the pop. That was our contactor coming in. So now across our timer we have so that's 2.4 volts, but basically you had your voltage drop. That means that these contacts close and now it's sent power off to its next destination in series, which would be our contactor coil. So right now we're gonna check across our contactor coil. As you can see, we have our 24 volts, all right? So a coil is different than some contacts. So while this is not energized, while the coil is not energized across, you would have zero volts. But when it is energized, it's the opposite of like checking a switch. So in this case, once this is energized, we're gonna have a 24 volt reading. So if you measure across the coil and you got your 24 volts, that means your control circuit is operating and we can leave that out of the equation so you know your thermostat did its job if there was any type of timer or anything else that goes through this circuit such as safeties and other things that means everything's good on that end and we are ready to start whatever we may be starting in this case it's going to be our compressor and condenser fan motor so if we look closely we're gonna see that the contacts pushed in on their own. If we look closely, we can see this is pushed in as there is a gap. So this contactor is energized. 
it's important to understand the type of line voltage you are using. So in my case, I'm actually only using 120 volts, but typically you're gonna see this kind of contact there in a 208 to 230 volt circuit. So let's see, line voltage comes from the top. It might be different in your case, but in my case, it comes from the top. The way you can tell is that the bottom of the contactor has the wires that go to feed our compressor and our fan motor and on the other side as you can see if you follow it comes into the power coming in so i'm going to check across the top i have 120 volts as you can see i just have one on each terminal on the top so i have 120 volts that means i have line voltage coming in once the coil is energized and now sends that power to the other side which will energize our components and the way you would check if the power went across is that now you check the bottom two terminals as you can see i have 120 volts here so the 120 from above send the 120 below feeding our components if you had 208 you would have your line coming in from the top right 208 and you would read 208 on the bottom in my case i'm using 120 so the fact that I have 120 on each side means that this contactor is doing its thing. If we look closely, we can see our light bulb lit up. That is our compressor. And if we listen closely, we can also hear this fan running. This is our condenser fan. So they both energized and that's coming from the contactor. So I just turned off my thermostat. I just wanna show you a couple of things. So if we check from above, right? We have our 120, but since our coil is not energized. We don't have the 120 on the bottom feeding our components. We're gonna check across the coil and we have no voltage and that is because we're not calling for cooling. So it's important to understand that your control circuit needs to send the voltage down here after it goes through a couple of things, either some safety controls a timer or whatever it may be. Those are the typical things. I'm just gonna go over this quickly one more time. While you don't have anything calling, you would have no voltage across the coil. Once you have the system calling, let's say this is your contactor for your compressor or condensing fan motor. So you'd have to have Y sending 24 volts here and across we would have 24 volts that would energize our coil. And when the energized coil is energized, we're gonna, it's gonna now gonna depress these contacts. When I press it, you can see the light came on and you hear a noise. That is our light bulb and the fan, which represents our compressor and condenser fan motor, right? Now, once this coil energizes and these depressed, now it sends power from here to here and then the power from here to here. In my case, I had 120 across here. Now I'd send the 120 here to our components. If you had a 208 volts, you would send 208 from here, now 208 down here, and then to your components. We have a 24 volt coil. Uh, sometimes you might see other voltage on the coil, but it's the same principle. If it's a 120 volt coil, you would have 120 volts across if it's energized, if a 208 volt coil, you would need 208 volts across. Let's just quickly go over what exactly happened here. So right now the system's off between R and Y, which is our cooling circuit. We're gonna have our 24 volts. Once we set the system to cooling, we're gonna have a voltage drop. So once you lose the voltage, that means the circuit actually closed, thermostat did its job, you're good to go. Then from there, if you follow the Y, it now comes into this wire. So now we have our 24 volts in this wire, and then we go into this timer. Across the timer, we are going to have our 24 volts until a predetermined amount of time passes by. Once the time passes by as a protection, now we're gonna have the voltage drop. That means the circuit closed. And now we can send power from this side to the other side. Follow that. That energizes one side of our coil. 
then the other side of our coil goes back to common okay on our transformer so once you send the 24 volts here it goes through the coil and then it can complete the circuit by coming back to common on the transformer on your low voltage side of it your secondary so once the transformer energizes the coil all right but before it's energized you're not going to have the, a reading here once it sends the power through since this is a 24 volt circuit and coil as far as your control circuit you're going to read 24 volts across that means our coil is energized that means these contacts here should plunge in with a magnetic field that has been created with the coil energized then we send power from one side of the contactor to the other so typically you have your line voltage set up on one side of your contactor in this case it's this one so we have our steady 120 volts because that's what we're using and once the coil energizes this plunges in and sends our 120 volts on the bottom to energize our components or if you had 208 volts you would read that across it's always waiting there but we're waiting for our control circuit to say hey we want cooling so once we control that with our thermostat then it will send your 208 volts now from here down to the other side energizing your components that use that voltage hopefully you all got a better understanding on how a control circuit works along with a air conditioner but specifically how to troubleshoot a two-pole contactor you will come across three-pole contactors if you are in the commercial industry and you come across three-phase voltage the principles are exactly the same to check them is pretty much the same but I understand without seeing it it's hard to imagine where I will be creating another video on that please leave a comment on what kind of video you'd like me to make as I will be making new videos every single week and if anyone found this one interesting or helpful please drop a like comment and subscribe and I'll catch you all next time yeah.